Catherine Henningfeld Fort is from the class of 1995 and is being recognized with the Up and Coming Alumnus Award. Kate is a graduate of Hollins University in Roanoke, Virginia. She received her BA in History with honors in 1999. After graduation, she worked for Congresswoman Lois Capp's 1998 congressional campaign and various political campaigns and committees. She next attended and graduated magnum cum laude from Michigan State University College of Law with a Certificate of Indigenous Law and is licensed to practice law in Michigan. Kate is a staff attorney and adjunct law professor at the Indigenous Law and Policy Center of Michigan State University College of Law. In 2015, she started the Indian Child Welfare Act Appellate Project, which assists tribes in Indian Child Welfare Act cases across the country. She is a leading expert in ICWA and is a sought-after speaker on this topic. Matthew Fletcher, Professor of Law and Director of the Indigenous Law and Policy Center at Michigan State, wrote a summation of Kate's initiatives and development at the center. He noted that she took a leadership role in recruiting, advising, and instructing American Indian law students and others who want to enter the field of American Indian law. Many of these Native law students are the first of their families to attend law school or even to attend college and have very few resources. He added that because of her help, many say Kate is the reason they graduated. Kate has also been an instructor for 10 years teaching the Indigenous Law Clinic, one of the most intense classes in law school. This class requires students to deliver legal services to real clients. There is an enormous amount of writing involved, and the instructor must constructively comment on all written submissions. This last year, Kate formed the ICWA clinic and nearly doubled the number of students in the clinic. As a scholar and advocate, Kate has published articles and highly ranked law reviews on such topics as the legal history of American Indian property rights, tribal state cooperative governance agreements, and the Indian Child Welfare Act. Federal courts have cited her articles, which is a kind of gold standard for scholars. She is also publishing her own case book for her Indian Child Welfare Act class, the first book of its kind. According to Professor Fletcher, she has masterminded the drafting of the Michigan Indian Family Preservation Act of 2012, the strongest state statute that implements the federal Indian Child Welfare Act in the nation. MIFPA, as it is known, is the cutting-edge thinking in the field, and the U.S. Department of Interior's Bureau of Indian Affairs cribbed generously from the 2012 statute in its new guidelines on ICWA. Kate also is involved with a number of other organizations that has put her in the forefront of an extremely hot area of law. Her lifelong friend Erica sees her as someone who is changing the world through her work as an attorney and professor and by giving a voice to those who do not have a voice. She says Kate is passionate about her work. She cares deeply for her colleagues and students and the families for which she fights. Erica also admires her as a mother of two wonderful boys for whom she cooks healthy meals and is involved in their school and sports. Kate resides in East Lansing with her husband Ross and sons 12-year-old David and 7-year-old Thompson. Her parents are Ken and Diane Henningfield who reside in Adrian. Would you help me welcome Kate to the stage? I, um, I, I speak all the time, but I uh, never have to speak after seeing people talk about me like this. Um, so I would like to um, I would like to thank the Adrian School Je Education Foundation and the Adrian High School Alumni Association and Jean uh, Benz Profena for putting this nomination together and um, contacting my boss for that recommendation letter that I didn't even know that he wrote um, until I received this award. Uh, Lisa asked, I think she asked us all to talk about um, the impact uh, that going, that maybe teachers are going to um, Adrian Public Schools had on us. And I kind of laughed because if you know me, um, my dad taught in this building for almost 30 years. So it's not like, um, I can't imagine my life without Adrian Public Schools. So I had all the teachers that people are talking about, right? I had Mr. Pullen and I had Mr. Boudreaux and I had Mr. Wilkins, who's here. Um, and I had my dad, that was a rough year. Um, <laughs> um, but those were also the people who were in my house all the time, 
right? Those are the people I saw. I grew up with teachers. Um, my grandma was a kindergarten teacher. She actually started the kindergarten uh, where my mom was. My mom's a college professor. She's an English professor at Adrian College. Um, and so my, when I look around, my family couldn't be here today for all, all many, many reasons, um, weird reasons. My sister's husband is a clown with Cirque du Soleil, so she's in Australia, and my parents are down in um, North Carolina, and my boys have to go to school tomorrow, uh, and my husband has to go to work. But there are people here um, today who are my family who I grew up with, and I try to explain what it's like to grow up in Adrian. I actually try to explain this to judges. I try to explain this to judges who are making decisions about what to do with kids and um, where to put kids. And I try to explain that every kid deserves what I had, which is to grow up in a community um, where I had adults who took care of me and who I always trusted. And so I wanted to especially note that Ms. Humphrey's lessons are really important. Like we know these. We know this by the data. We know what creates resiliency in kiddos, and those lessons are them. So you can be that person for, for, those, for kids, and that all of our kids deserve this kind of community to grow up in. So thank you. I didn't cry. Um, and I hope you have a lovely evening tonight. Thank you. Congratulations, Kate.